In this video, I want to show you some recording shortcuts and some little workflow tips that'll help you work really quickly and efficiently. Now I've loaded a few new sounds in here and I want to start laying some parts down in anticipation of recording some live audio on top of. So I've got a drum kit loaded in, I've got the metronome on and I'm just going to hit play. Okay, I'm going to hit stop, and you're probably thinking, what's he doing? He's just hitting play. How's he ever going to get what he just played in and save it? Well, Logic has a great feature called Capture Last Take as recording, and it'll allow you to hit the control and asterisk key once you've finished, and it'll capture what you've just done, like this. And it's already pre-quantized because I had my default through setting with nothing selected set to 16B, and it's done. Now I'm going to hit Command Option Return, to create another track assigned to the same channel strip. And I'm going to rewind this and lay in a hi-hat part. And I'm going to do the same thing. And while it's playing, I can even hit control asterisk. There we go. And it captures it. Already done. Now what I can do is I can double click on this and give it a track name. Because we have two tracks assigned to the same channel strip, it'll allow for a track name. I'm going to call that drums. And I can just hit the tab key to quickly shift to the next track. I'll call that hi-hats. I'll hit return and it'll dismiss the box. And you'll see the names haven't changed. I'm going to control click and configure the track header to show track names instead of the auto name. And now we see drums and hi-hat. All right, let me go back to the beginning, and I want to show you another interesting little record trick. Now, when you control click on the record key, you'll see that there are three separate record modes. We've been using the regular record mode, where the asterisk or record key command simply turns recording on or off. There's a really interesting variation here called record repeat. And what this does is this. When you're recording, let's say there's a take that you don't like. As you're recording it, you realize you don't like it. Normally what you would do is you'd have to stop, delete what you've recorded, rewind to the beginning, hit record again, and start. Well, with record repeat, while Logic is playing, once you realize you want to discard what you've done, you just hit the record key again, and it'll automatically discard what you've done and place the playhead back at the beginning where you started recording from all without stopping. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to position the playhead a bar in. Now we'll have our bar count off, I'll record, and as I'm recording, I'll hit the record key command again, and it'll go back and start over and discard what I've done. Let's try it with some bass. Okay, I don't like it, I'm gonna hit record again, and it starts right back. Don't like it. And there we go, record, repeat. Now there's another variation of the record controls. You control click, we'll go to record toggle. Now what this does is it toggles the record mode on and off while you're recording. So while you're recording, you can hit the key and it'll just keep playing. And while it's playing, you can hit record again and you can move in and out of record mode. Let me show you, I have an organ sound set up here and let's try it with that. Let's lower the volume a little bit and try it. Recording, now out of record mode. And now in record mode. And out of record mode. So the record button toggles back and forth. So it's an interesting mode if you need to leave a track running and just punch in at certain points. All right, let's delete these 
and put down a real part here and see what we can do. Okay, we have a part. So that's done. Next thing we're gonna do is look at punching in. Let's say I want to replace the second bar of that. Here's what we need to do. We need to turn on auto punch mode and replace mode. Now the auto punch button is this button over here. I'm gonna turn that on and you see a little red stripe in the lower half of the transport ruler. I can resize the handles like that and I'm gonna set it to punch in just on that bar. And I can toggle it on or off with that, but I can also option click in the bar ruler and that'll turn it on or off. If I just click regularly, it works with cycle mode, but option will turn it on or off. Now, the next thing we want to do is do replace mode, that little X. When that's on, what I re-record now is going to replace this area. Now, the great thing about using this auto punch mode is you can have it play from before and you can play along to get into the groove and it'll only start recording once it comes to the second bar. Let's back it up and see what I can come up with. And there we go. Let's listen to that. That's great. Let's try and see if I need anything else to replace. Okay, I'm going to replace that bar. So I'm going to put the zone over there. And I'm going to set a cycle up to repeat, let's say, one, two, three, four. Let's say those three bars. I want to repeat them over and over again. And I'm going to try some different passes. And let's check our recording preferences. And I'm going to go to create tracks and cycle record and mute. So it's now going to create additional tracks and punch in only in that part, regardless of how much I'm playing. It's only going to record that one bar. Okay, I think I like that last take, and that should be the one that's going to play right now. Good. So there's recording using auto punch mode with and without cycle and with replace on. And we'll end off this video by using our nice little tab feature for the track naming. I'm going to call that bass, tab, and I'll call that wah, organ. And the rest of them we won't need because we're going to get rid of them. So that's it for this video. All kinds of different modes for recording and punching in with. Experiment, practice with them, and I'll see you for more next time.